Game number one, ladies and gentlemen, in our series here at the Rocket vs. Fear Invitational. My insanity is going up against I Too Hard on map number one, Cursed Hollow. To the left side of the map, it is My Insanity with Ace of Spades in the Bright Wing, Lowell on the Illidan. Shinobu is playing his Nova today as Frats jumped on the Arthurs and Araragi is playing the Tigers. To the right side, we have I Too Hard with a pretty interesting comp as well. Arkham on the Uther, Grimskull on the Falstead, Green on the Zeratul, combat very well with the Falstead, and also with the stitches that is being picked up by Noisen as Konus plays the Terriel. So in this first game we have actually like, oh a money pick, I love it. Money, money, money. Well, but yeah, coming back to the original point, like we have a lot of combo potential here for I to Heart. They have the potential to go into Judgment, into Shock and Awe with the Terriel and the False That The False That can combo very well with the Void Prism of the Zerat tool if executed perfectly. And of course the Void Prism in itself is great when Stitches gets a hook in. And wow, those butt cheeks, look at that. He definitely squats. But yeah, the Stitchers, if he gets a hook in and then the Void Prism comes into play, you can isolate a hero from the rest of the team and drop him early on. That's of course where then the Judgment after the Stitchers Gorge is over also plays a huge role. So a lot of really good potential with the synergy between the heroes for Team Eye to Heart. On the other hand, we have My Insanity right now with uh, an interesting lineup since they do not have a lot of support for Lowell. Lowell is a player that plays a lot of Illidan, like he loves the hero, he's extremely good with it, but usually when they play they either have an Uther that can help him out a lot with a burst heal, or they play it with a Tassadar for the shield. This time they do not have Tyrrell shield, they don't have Tassadar shield, and they don't have the burst heal by the Uther, and instead they have the Brightwing. So an interesting play that we see here, the bans in the game, uh, we've actually seen bans on uh, the Chen earlier, we had a ban on the Tassadar, we had also a ban on Abatha. Ooh, as Noisen and Green move in, trying to steal that camp, they don't get the camp, and Brightwing immediately jumps in, and the false that here as well. Grimskull is trying to assist his team, but Green is about to die, the Stitch is already dead, and Grimskull, he just flew right into his death, and now three of them are down. A bit of a, a weird uh, situation for them. First of all, it was a nice attempt of stealing the camp and going into a 2 versus 2. The problem for I to Heart, I feel, was simply that the rotations of My Insanity were so much faster than their own. The Brightwing was there like a second after the engagement started and False had just needed way too much time to come in. Up to the point where False Dead was, was finally in the fight, one of the heroes was already dead, the second about to die, and False Dead himself just didn't get a chance to move out there. So that was extremely unlucky for them, and just a beautiful rotation that we saw from my insanity, way too fast for I to Heart to handle. So now it's a near ad level advantage, 5 versus 4, with the first tributes burning down at the bottom of the map. We have Brightwing already there in the mid lane, it's a bit of pressure against Tyrael, who already has two well up, so he's losing his well here, and it's not looking like Aitohard is really going to contest that, right? I mean, Araragi, oh, at the top, is even doing a lot of damage against Grimskull. Down here, it's a 4 versus 4 in just a second, but Shinobu is already channeling it, and no hook, but nice interrupt in the last second, as Arkham is now moving in, but the lockdown against him, and the immediate drop on the Uther, really well done here. Lowell didn't even like have to attack in that fight at all. Now suddenly it's Konos who is in trouble as Illidan is moving in. Oh my god, that lockdown against Green with a Howling Blast. And Konos is now being hunted. Illidan of course in the one versus one situation is still one of the strongest heroes in the entire game. And that's coming very transparent as he just like drops the Tyrrell and moves out right away. Level 7 versus level 5 with 6 kills versus 0. Lowell being dropped since Noisen apparently got a good hook off. So they get one counter kill, but they are still down one, uh, one entire level. Looking at the talents here, we have Hotshots already picked up, standard build on the Nova, also the same for the Illidan here. What we also see is that Araragi is actually going for the melting point on his grenades and not going for full focus on the overkill build. So pretty interesting to see. What surprises me is that we have Block here taken by Stitches and Zeratul. Not really the talents that you see a whole lot. Block is a talent that is taken very rarely by opponents. I guess there's a lot of right click damage on uh, the team. On my insanity, so that makes a bit more sense to go for the block, but it's still a bit out of the standard talking about builds. 
Now another attempt this time to take the hard camp here and steal that, but Brightwing is of course already there, but here come two more heroes for Team I to hard, and this is looking like a much better fight for them right now. Up at the top, there are two heroes for my insanity, and the knights go this time to them. Nice hook on Lowell, and without the support, he goes down. Much, much better fight this time for Eye to Heart. A good rotation, and that worked very well for them with Grimskull now even moving in. The top, on the other hand, of course, already being pushed, and we've been talking about our Ragia and his level 4 talent going a lot more for building damage than anything else, and that helps him here. Grimskull needs to barrel roll away and does that in the last second as Konos is trying to get the second tribute. They're getting their first one right there. Very well done, and Araragi moving back already. Fred is in trouble, Araragi as well, but they don't really focus on one target. They're trying to get Ace of Spades now too. Once again, the, the attempted focus against the Arthurs, and they get him. Get the oh my god, Chinopo! I thought he was behind the wall, but he wasn't, and he goes down as well. And bam, there we have two more kills for Team I Too Hard. Doing this really well now. They are starting to find their stride at the beginning. They got taken out um, very, like, pretty easily, actually, in those fights. That first rotation was, of course, something where they lost three heroes that didn't end up in their favor at all. But now they are starting to gain a lot of momentum by playing it really well here. But still, they are not gonna... Well, they are taking down the boss, so that's gonna give them some experience. And I guess once they, they grab a few, at least one more wave, they're gonna be on the 10 as well. But without the 10, they cannot contest the uh, boss taken by my insanity right now. The tribute, unfortunately for Eye to Heart, is spawning down here at the bottom. It also means, though, that our Aragi won't be able to fight with the tribute, or they're gonna lose the wall here. Falstead can simply fly in, which he does. Oh, and they interrupt the boss that has taken. It's 10 versus 10 right now, and the Tigers isn't there just yet. Here comes the shock and awe, oh, and... Oh my god, the, there comes the Void Prism and Arthas is already down. They get Ace of Spades as well. They take the boss. Ace is just jumping away in the last second, but Illidan is dead once again and they take the tribute. Boss stolen, tribute taken, two heroes dropped. Seven kills against six. And the Illidan is starting to run into that problem that I described earlier. Without support, he's squishy. With good focus, he'll die. And that's what happens here. We have so much potential for good combos with heroic abilities on the side of eye to heart and they are starting to realize that potential, which is extremely important for them. They're getting level 12 against level 11 and my insanity had a great start into the game, but then they uh, were really surprised twice on an attempt to take first the hard camp and then the boss camp and right now they're starting to struggle. They're falling behind in experience and at the same time they are still attempting to drop that top forward which they haven't done yet and the Stitches is moving in already trying to maybe drop that hook. No, he's trying to save the fort for now as I Too Hard is putting pressure onto the middle lane as well with four more heroes trying to get another tower kill there. Green on the Zeratul also starting to get his damage in. Needs to be careful with Shinobu moving in there's always the potential of... Oh, nice. Hits one of the creeps. The dodge is behind that in the last second. But really nice a nice fight so far between those two teams. I really like this first opening game. But as you can see, I too hard now in the position where they could curse them. Oh, here comes the move up against Shinobu. He's being pressured by the Tyrell. And the Judgment and the Shock and all. Oh, that combo is working so well. And they're dropping Shinobu, aren't they? They are not. They're losing two. They kill Shinobu in the last ditch effort. But now the Grim Skull on the Falset has to barrel roll away. And Stitches is getting killed too. They were bit too overzealous there, trying to drop the Nova and take the DPS away, and with them going just full YOLO in that moment, we have now another tribute taken by Team My Insanity, only Grimskull surviving, level 13 versus level 13, and now My Insanity is stealing the golems here. Taking those, and at the top with another mercenary camp, we already have the Siege Giants doing damage not only to the fort, but also pushing that lane in even further. Now the first thing that I Heart has to do is deal with those Siege Giants that we have down here. Level 14, a slight advantage in experience now for my Insanity. They're moving towards another camp and they're going straight for the foot here. Interestingly enough, I to Heart leaves those two Siege Giants doing their thing. Apparently Grimskull is the one hero that they want to deal with it. Okay, now they take them out, but they might lose another foot here. 
That fort down here is already very much damaged, and I guess if they knew about the position of I2 Heart, they would just drop it and then move back. So the Heart Camp has been taken. The fort down here isn't done just yet. Shinobu is about to move in. They want to put some more pressure onto that now that they realize that half of the I2 Heart team is not ready, and they get the fort. Drop it real quick and then move back. The only reason why they moved back early in the first place is that they didn't want to get overwhelmed by their opponent or blindsided. This is tribute number three for whichever team picks it up. And that's going to be the important one. So they need to contest that now. Stitches up here at the front. Oh, the hook! A great hook. And does he get him behind the wall? No, he doesn't. No, he does not, and now Stitches himself is suddenly in trouble. Stitches trying to move away. Here comes Illidan. Maybe a bit too ham. No. Survives for now. The Tribute is still there. The Void Prism as well, and they're trying to chase them, but Stitches is extremely low. Stitches is very low, and they might have to abandon that. Arthur's ultimate is nearly down too. They could contest it once again. They could cancel easily with Konos Trump jumping in. There comes Green. Both of them, two hero abilities are down. Gorge is down. Void Prison is down. And they try to go with the Judgment straight for Ace. The shock and all. Oh, it's basically nothing. And here come, they come again. Uh, Brightwing nearly down. The Arthur's about to die, but Green dies first on the Zeratul as Lowell is now being engaged against. Oh my god, Arkham is too late. The Uther dying too. And back comes the Illidan now that he gets healed up. Very well done here again by my insanity. They just lead I2 Heart in situations where I2 Heart is overextending, is trying to desperately get a specific kill and they don't get it. Of course it helped a lot that in the last fight there were already two or three of the heroic abilities down in cooldown. Now there's the curse on the I2 Heart team, it's 14 kills against 7. The boss camp is being taken and that of course will help them to maybe even push the keep up here. It's only 5 and 4 seconds on the Uther and the uh, Tyrael. But we could see another rotation by my insanity. Apparently they're not even thinking about it. They try to push in that wall, or are they? Waiting for the boss. That's what they currently do. And that boss alone, if you could just like one stun. And look at that, that advantage in levels. 16 versus 14. That extra talent is just so important. And with the boss pushing that extra talent on their back, they can always try to drop a hero real quick and then go straight for the fort and now the keep. And that's exactly what we see them doing. Oh my god, Noise and completely out of position. Gets the gorge, but he gets dropped way too easily. And Arkham is dying as well. It's two heroes down already. And Mindsand, he is mercilessly pushing their way into the base of I2 Heart. Their keep is gone. Another 10 seconds on the curse. Two heroes down on 20 and 28 seconds. They just want to go and core it. They're trying to go for the core here. Illidan already with his ultimate and 12 minutes in it looks like I to heart might lose game number one. The Void Prism by Zeratul is delaying that for a bit longer. Great job here by the Zeratul but it doesn't help. It is game one that ends in favor of my insanity. The GG as we see MYI taking game number one against I to heart. Game number two between MYI and i 2 Hard. Currently, my insanity is in the 1 0 lead in the best of three series. Map number two is again Cursed Hollow. The teams have the option to pick a map that was already played, so Cursed Hollow is once again the map. We have to the left side in blue my insanity with Ace of Spades on the Uther, Araragi on the Arthas, Frats on the Anuburak, Shinobu playing the Reina, and Lowell again on the Illidan. To the right side of the map, Arkham on the Rhaegar, Noisen on the Stitches for Eye to Heart, Green on Tychus, Grimskull is playing Falstead, and Konos is playing Chen. The bans in the game, we've seen a ban on the Nova, we had a ban on the Tacita and the Abatha as well. And then one more ban later on on the Zeratul to just not allow Eye to Heart to go into the Stitches Zeratul combo once again. So we have four melee heroes for my insanity, and we have a couple of pretty decent combo potentials here for Eye to Heart. They also have the Rhaegar for the Ancestral Healing that they can use there. Are they really going to go for... Nah, they're not going to go for an early boss. They are, they know, but they're going down for that. They're uh, locked down against the Stitches. And a bit of an attempt by both of them to... Uh, 
get an early kill here. Didn't really work out for either one of them, but yeah. So with four melee heroes and only one range hero, this is going to be a pretty interesting game for my insanity. They have the initiation with the Anubarak. They have then uh, the Arthas as one of the best tanks in the entire game. The Uther as a great healer. But in terms of DPS, they are relying a lot on the Raynor and also on the Illidan here. So that's going to be an interesting one. The last time... Okay, I was actually wondering if Noisen would move in and try to go for another move there. Oh, oh, Shinobu. Oh, 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 oh. That's going to be first blood. Is it? No. No, no, oh, what? How the hell did he survive? Three against one, and I guess that hook by Noisen didn't push him back far enough. At the end, it looks like Shinobu was the lucky one there. Three against one, and he didn't die. I, I could have sworn that was first blood. I would have bet money on that working. But yeah, we have Ace of Spades in the mid lane, trying to get the heartbeat going. We had this time not the attempt by those three to catch the mercenaries that were down here at the uh, Siege Giant camp. The last time it didn't really work out too well. We lost too many heroes with that. And also at the top we currently have Shinobu going straight. Well actually like he's trying to do something here but it looks very much like he might be caught off guard. Nope, the rest of the team already moved in with Araragi and also the Anubarak played by Freds getting into a position. Experience wise, they are still all on the same level. We have the two healers in the mid lane, with the Rhaegar up against the Uther down to the bottom lane. It's once again that battle between the Falstead and the Illidan, which we've seen already once. And three versus three up at the top lane currently. Here comes Green Noise, and they're all actually pressured back by this, and uh, Konos even caught by that quick howling blast that we saw. As you can see here, we have the first hook against the Siege Shine. It's actually always one of the things that you should do, hook one of those Siege Shines yeah. towards the wall if they are outside of rage and protected, so they get an opportunity to drop them with the help of the towers, just so that the towers don't get too much damage down there. Falstead could fly up to the top, he could go for that. Do they give up the tribute? They should fight for it. There's the money pick again that, that we have for Konos. It's always tempting to get that money pick, by the way, not because it looks good, but because it's just, it's just about prestige. The Falstead actually flying in towards the back. I like that, playing it cautious here. And they are starting to move in. Alright, comes the interrupt and the initiation by Freds. At the same time, the Howling Blast. Arkham is in trouble on the Ray guy. He's already moving back, but he's about to die to the Illidan. But Arthas is dead first. So it's an exchange right now. One versus one with another quick hook against the Illidan, dropping him too. And is there maybe an opportunity for another hook by Noisen? Does he have that cooldown ready? Nope. He does not. Two for one in favor of Eye to Heart and they get the tribute. So that melee lineup not unfolding its strength just yet. Experience wise not too much. Like a slight advantage for Eye to Heart. I don't think you really have to take that into account. But we have also a night camp now being taken and that actually helps with Grimskull moving back down to the bottom lane now that Illidan appeared here. That's actually pretty smart, like helping the team out to drop the night camp and as soon as he sees that one of the MYI heroes is down at the bottom lane, he jumps in and he says like, alright, if you start soaking experience down here, I will be there too and do the same thing. Up to the top, we have still Shinobu waiting. Konos is of course a target that he can't take down on his own. Level 7 now, and we are taking a quick look at the talents to give you a bit of an idea what's currently going on there. We have, once again, the quick fingers here for Shinobu's Reina and also the Revolution Overdrive. A uh, bit of an attempt there in the mid lane to cause some trouble with that night camp that they freshly captured. A mercenary camp at the bottom is going to relieve some pressure from Falstead, but here in the mid lane, there yeah, we have three heroes starting to push in with that night camp for my insanity, and they have the level 8 talent, uh, not the talent on level 8, but the level itself, a bit faster than the opponent. Still the two kills versus one, and we are waiting for the next tribute, and there it is. Tribute spawns, and of course, Chen immediately rotates down to the bottom. Down on his pick, already on the way. And, uh, well, what do we have there for uh, Illidan and especially the false The false set is moving back behind the gate before he flies in. I like that. That's a really good move. Oh, actually, Barrel rolls over there. We have the team moving in. Konos is jumping in. Freds is in trouble. Here comes the healing ward. Really well placed. But Konos goes down. Freds dies as well. It's again that exchange. And Araragi is in trouble. The Arthas dies too. Two for one. And Ace of Spades and Shinobu are in trouble. The Illidan already moving back. Do we have another opportunity? To do maybe get a hook. Oh, that hook missed. Could have been another kill for them, but they get the tribute instead. So, two tributes for them, four kills against two. Level 9 versus 9. Still a slight advantage here for my insanity. They've been doing better on the lanes getting their experience in. So the laning phase is slowly coming to an end with a level 10, 
10 talent on the horizon. And we see once more the heroes taking their positions. But I really like how Aitard is playing this in the fights now. The problem really being that we have not a whole lot of assassins for... Well, no, not really all that too. We have still our two assassins there for my insanity. The problem is really that with like quadruple melee, they are starting to have a bit of trouble getting the damage in. An attempt to get the boss here, and that is turning things around. Noisen is not going to survive this. An easy drop against him, and Green might now die as well. Nope, he's moving back towards the towards the fort in time. We already had Grimskull rotating up to the top. But yeah, that was an easy kill against the Stitches, and that gave them the level 10 here too. So 10 versus 10 now. An attempt to maybe go for Konos. Doesn't catch him, but the Howling Blast at least locks him down for a second. Already low down to the bottom lane is starting to take down the first few towers. That gives him also more experience. Up here, we have more pressure against the top lane together with the mercenary camps. Now that green moves in with uh, the overkill being used. Four versus four. Actually, four versus three right now, since we have Ace of Spades still in the mid lane, gaining more experience for his team. Down there is low. Another tribute is also spawning, and that triggers an immediate rotation by the team. Shinobu is eaten and Shinobu will die but they're most likely going to lose the tribute for that. The Reina is dead and yes you can see that the tribute is definitely going to go to my insanity but they are going to get the boss now. Both teams are rotating towards the boss and I don't think that uh, Aitohar is going to be fast enough to get the boss up here at the top and then move down to contest the boss from uh, my insanity. I don't think that's going to happen but well let's wait and see. We have the first one up at the top, about to be taken. Yep, there it has it. And down here, okay, that is gonna drop as well. Another look at the talents now that we have that currently turning out. We have the Gorge here. Do we have any surprises with the uh, heroics? Not really. It's what you would expect. Actually, the updraft here for the gr for Scrim Skulls falls that instead of going for bribe, we have slam build here again. Overkill for greens uh, for greens tigers. And coming back to the top, it's an exchange for the two of them. It's going to be one Ford for a Ford. With MYI being a little bit faster, one of the reasons is that Noisen is currently in the mid lane and apparently was pushing this back. They are close to the 13, and I actually guess that MYI is going to be happy to push with this. They're going to take the Siege Shines down here. They're just going to push this easily. That Ford has been taken, and they're already moving back, but that boss is starting to go ham on the wall and with the double siege shine now moving in those two are gonna do even more damage there comes the tribute now as well and I do hard has to be fast they need to drop this boss and then they need to move up to the top to make sure that they have an opportunity to contest the tribute they want to get that tribute it would be curse and if they let it go then it means that we're gonna have a tribute fight for number three for both teams in the next approach and yes that tribute is definitely gonna end up in the hands of my insanity or is it no that hook wow how did he actually get that hook that was like it wanted when you actually get the hook past them Fretz is in trouble though as he hits the cooldown for the E and moves back. But Arthur's this time with a successful channel. So it's once again the opportunity for my insanity to get the first uh, the first curse here. Five kills versus three. My insanity in the 1-0 lead in the best of three series. If they win it here, they are moving towards the semi-finals where they will either meet Alternate or SK Gaming. The last best of three that we are going to have on, screen, on stream just a little bit later. Um, down here, we have to the left side against mercenary camps taken. Both teams are nearly at level 14. And it's once again the five man pressure towards the mid lane. Especially with the false set, of course, having the ability to roam there and uh, just fly in. He doesn't have bribe stacks up this time, but the barrel roll might actually help him to get away from the Illidan if need be. So let's see how that fight goes this time. So far I have to say that we've seen very good initiations with the hooks from the Stitchers. They're starting to push that in, but the tribute is now there. That's unfortunate for MYI. First of all, they're going to lose this ball, and apparently they're not going to fight. Are they fighting for the tribute? Yes, they are. They're moving in, but there's already the quick and obvious party bush. Very obvious party bush. Where comes the stun? Oh, the shock and all gets cancelled. No, that 
would have been a great one. Shotgun all gets cancelled. Here comes the ancestral healing. Oh god, the first hero is down and Uberak is already gone, but the Rega is about to die. Here comes the shotgun all once again. Gets the hook in against two. Two heroes down for my insanity already. Shinobu is in trouble as well. He's trying to move back in the last second, but Konos is jumping and dropping him too. It's a three for zero as Ace of Spades is running away. He's being chased down hard. Falset is moving in once again, but it doesn't really look like they can get him, but they will get the curse. They are getting the curse for sure this time, and that is trouble for MYI. That fort down here at the bottom is definitely gonna fall. They are breaking through the wall. The oh my god, that was so close. If Uther gets hooked here, he has no chance of escaping. No chance in hell. And that fort is, of course, history. Four melee heroes in the lineup, and it starts to show that my insanity is struggling because of it. They are blocking the, each other in the fights, and they are really having quite some trouble there, especially getting to the back line. Of course, the Illidan is always one option if you want to go there, but still, the Falstead escaping and also the Rekha getting away for so long. That was a big problem they had in the last fight. Now it's level 16 versus level 15, and MYI with another attempt in the mid lane. They are, sorry, uh, I too hard with another attempt to drop one of the forts of MYI in the mid lane. Moving in here, taking another one. Only the keeps are left. They only have the keeps left, and here comes Aragi and his team. They have another 10 seconds of curse time against them. Up at the top, at least the double siege shine that we have there is helping them out, but it looks like the boss is going to be up soon. Ah, 40 seconds. That's a bit too long. But they're just lying in wait here. I'm not quite sure for what. Because, at the, like, I don't really think that MY is going to move in there as long as that curse is up. And now, of course, the top lane needs to be de pushed. It's going straight against the siege giants and take those out. Uh, but yeah, down to the bottom lane now against that potential of a rotation. Let's see, 20 seconds on the boss over here, 15 seconds right here. And what are they doing? They're moving into the watchtower range. They're starting to take the camps there. Nope, there comes the vision. False that is flying in there, looking for an opportunity. Is there going to be a hook? Gets the hook against the... Yes, he gets the hook against the immediate, like, Araragi is moving in. The shock and all this time, hitting home. Oh, the drop against Freds on the Anubarak. And the next hero about to die as well as Arthas is being focused down. Araragi is moving back, healing himself, getting a heal there too. But the Uther is not so lucky. Uther is down. And now the rest of the team is in trouble as well. Rega is being killed, but Shinobu without a healer doesn't stand a chance there. Lowell dropped two, and Araragi is eliminated, which makes for a complete team wipe against MYI. And immediately everybody up on the horses and flying towards the boss, taking the one down here at the bottom, trying to drop him as fast as they can. They have another 10 seconds and still the Anubarak is back and even more for the rest of the team to come back into the game. Great job here in those fights, this time by Eye to Heart. Nice ultimates also by Grimskull. And I actually think that in terms of like DPS, he should be far up at the top, which he is with 28,000. Stitches a close second with 25,000. Looking at the talents here, we have once again nearly full slam build except for the Relentless that has been taken there. With Green and Falset both picking up the stone skin, they have a lot of survivability there too. And also Lowell and the Rhaegar, both with the Blood for Blood that they're currently using. A lot of Spell Shield here as well, which helps, by the way, a lot against the uh, Falset. And you could see that in uh, quite some of the fights where the heroes weren't attacked by spells just yet. And then the Falset ultimate, the first one that touched them. So the first boss taken down to the bottom and the second boss now also being captured as the tribute comes in. If they let that tribute go, it would mean that Eye to Heart is getting uh, cursed. But they are moving in and maybe Grimskull should start to fly in, which he doesn't need to do right now because my insanity is just now moving down to the bottom. We have also the uh, creeps taken out here, which gives, of course, vision. And there's the vision once again. Okay, they want to fight this. That, uh, the oh, Lowell gets hooked but moves back. Here comes Raiders. Raiders, a nice stun by Ace of Spades. Really good stun. The ancestral healing saving Grimskull. All of them in such a close encounter. But <laughs> look at that kill against the Anubarak. The Stitches is dead and Rega dies too. This time it looks like my insanity has the better position. They take down the false dead too and now it's hunting season. And that's when 
Taylor then is getting ready. He's definitely prepared and he is dropping them one after another. Only Konos about to escape here. At the top, the boss is starting to wreck the wall and he's going for the keep. They need to rotate towards that. They are not doing it. They are actually moving back. It looks more and more like they are trying to take down one of the opponent's keeps and they can do that. They take those mercenary camps right here. The Siege Giants will help them with a the push and now they go straight for the keep. But are they going to sacrifice the keep up the top? It looks like they will. They're going to fight keep for keep. Actually, it looks like the, uh, the keep might even survive here. Are they gonna drop? Oh, they're gonna definitely drop one up here. Nope. Freds is back. The Anubarak is back and he saves the keep. So yeah, they take a keep. They don't lose one. And my insanity with level 18 versus 18 could actually go for keep number two. And that's exactly what they're trying to. They're trying to move for the second keep. The Anubarak is nearly there and they get it. They get the second keep and no hook by noise and doesn't get that in. So suddenly we have 19 versus 19. It's 8 kills against 14 and MYI is in a position where they can win the game. They got that curse. The last fight was extremely important for them and brought them back into the game. Now they're looking for something to do on the map and they are going straight for keep number 3. Or actually, sorry, for fort number 3 they are taking here. And the rotation is too slow. We have the hard camp taken by eye to heart. They can't rotate there in time to save the fort and that will give my insanity a level advantage. They might be able to capture that 20 before their opponent and then force a fight. That would of course be the main goal here in that uh, in the current battle. We have the entire team moving towards the bottom now for eye to heart. Looks like my insanity wants to catch their mercenaries for now. But moving with only three heroes over here to the hard camp is maybe a bit of a mistake. I could even see a prediction hook trying to hit that uh, this one over here. Yeah, not going for it. They're moving straight for the hard camp. They want to get it. The camp at the top has been taken. Are they trying to contest? They are about to move in. No, the hard camp is already taken. We have a bit of a push going on down here towards the right side, but I don't think that the core is really threatened. It's more about the hook that could now land against my insanity. If that hook lands, if they drop one of the heroes and turn it into a 4 versus 5, that would be brutal. The top lane is being pushed by the mercenaries here. We have eye to heart in position. They're just lying in wait here. They are waiting. They give a lot of experience though now to my insanity. And if my insanity hits that 20, they're trying they're gonna try and move out on the map to fight. It's just like we see eye to heart with so much experience that they will get the level 20 pretty soon as well. And actually like they beat back. They use the Hearthstone to get back to uh, just save their own base, get that experience, drop that camp right there, and that's going to give them 20. Both teams should be able to fight on the 20 soon enough. One golem down here, 38 seconds. Another one actually up here on one minute and a bit more. Mm. Well, down here we have once again that rotation. The 20s are there. Double resurgence against one resurgence, and Nubara could uh, pick up another resurgence. Double blink on Shinobu and on the Illidan. Divine Hurricane, of course, being such a great tool here in the arsenal of the Uther. Oh, wow. Oh, my God. Stitches, does he know? Is there going to be a hook? Are they hooking it? Yes, they're hooking it! They're hooking it! An Ace of Spades with a stun! But look at that ultimate for Grimskull! He gets it in! And Konos is nearly dead! Oh my god, this is good for my insanity! At least the start for it! Noisen is nearly down! And he's gonna be melted away by Shinobu! Down goes the stitches! And oh wow, great fight for my insanity! They dropped the Rega! And they are about to drop the rest of the team as well! Lowell blinks back on the Illidan! He's not getting caught! And suddenly, even with the resurgence, we still have one hero down and once more my insanity is moving in. They are talking now about trying to call it but they move back and realize that it's gonna be a bit too much to ask for. They can go for the tribute though. They can work on the tribute count, they can get that camp here and then move straight towards the top, take the tribute. They're not gonna get much more than that. If not for the resurgence, I think we would have seen them go straight for the core. But with the stitches and everybody else being back so fast, there was no real move for them. Konos is thinking about trying to interrupt. I don't think he can do that. Oh, he's trying, but he's getting locked down. He's getting locked down and he's getting shrink rate. And here comes the stun. That was a mistake. Konos with a massive mistake here. He thought he might be able to do that, but he did apparently not see that there were so many heroes up here. And that cost him his life. 50 seconds downtime for him now. He got benched. And that means that this goal and this boss is going to be taken by my insanity. And they might actually try to core it with it. 
they might try, or at least to take keep. They might try to take the keep with that. They could move down, take the second boss, and then move in. But with another 40 seconds on the Chen, they have an opportunity to take keep. They're not trying to fight it, though. They're moving down to the bottom, and they're going to try and take their... Oh, are they? Are they going to go for the middle, or are they going to take the boss? No, they're going for the middle right now. They're going for the middle. They have the boss pushing the top lane. They're waiting a bit longer, but this is definitely going to do some amount of damage. No, moving back and taking the boss instead. Giving the boss up here a bit of a breathing room, a bit of space that he can use and just like drop that wall here. Once again, the move down to the bottom. We have them immediately starting to move in towards the boss. Mind Sanity is on level 21 against 20. They have the lead in the game, in the series, in the best of three. They are 1-0. 1-0 against their opponents. If they win it here, then it's over for I2 Hard in the Rocket vs. Fear Invitational. And they are moving up to the top. They want to get the tribute. What is my incentive doing? Are they fighting for the tribute or are they going to go and try to change it or to ex exchange it for another keep? Nope. They're moving to the top and they're just trying to fight it. They're trying to fight it. They go against the stitches and they're moving in immediately. Oh god, I to hard is split. They don't have one of their heroes with them. Here goes the stitches. He has resurgence st still up, but Arkham, the Rega, does not. And he is definitely going to die. They sacrifice him here. They know they can't save him. 60 seconds on him. The Tychus was out of position. He wasn't there with them. They couldn't fight this. And they still tried. And now they are down for, for like one player for 50 seconds and that is an eternity in Heroes of the Storm at this point. What is my insanity going to do with this? They're starting to, they're thinking, they thought for a second about coring it and uh, they moved down to the bottom lane already and then they were like, no boys, no boys, let's, let's play this safe. Let's not get wrecked here. We can end the game here. Uh, well, we can get it far enough ahead that we will be able to take the game later and they are really working towards the, uh, the curse apparently. They're trying to go for a curse. They're moving down to the tribute. And if they get another one after this, it's going to be the curse against Eye to Heart. And I feel like that's what they're trying to do there. They're going for the hard camp. Only one hero, two heroes actually, trying to aim for the tribute. Ace of Spades is capturing it. Two tributes against one now in favor of my insanity. They get the level 22. The core, by the way, down to 86 already, thanks to the catapults and all those mercenaries that we've been seeing taken by my insanity over the course of the entire uh, game here. And we really need to see a better team fight lineup. I, no, not the lineup. I, a better team fight positioning for I to Heart. They have the heroes, they have the tools, but in the last few fights, they were always caught off position a bit, and that definitely was a big issue for them. Noisen in the last one got initiated against way too early. They didn't have the Tychus with them. They were fighting a 4 versus 5 basically. And now it's more about like who's gonna get the next tribute because that's the one that especially I2 Hard has to fight for. And the plan of my insanity is like get a good lineup at the tribute, go for it. If we have to we can let it go. We can even try to exchange it for keep. But if the Tribute spawns when we are out on the map and we can set up our own position, we can just let them come and then just try and wipe them, grab the Tribute and the game on top of it. Ah, the initiation against Frats, the Anubarak. Oh, gets eaten as well. And he's gonna die here. Yep, Anubarak is dead, but he has Resurgence. He has Resurgence, he's gonna be back in the game, but that was a smart move. That was a nice hook that we saw there by Noisen. And now Anubarak is moving out onto the map again. They have the tribute spawning. I don't think that Anubarak is going to be there in time. And my insanity is moving down, but they won't be able to capture it. Or, can or cancel the capture here. So it's a two for two. It's a two for two with another siege giant push starting to put additional pressure onto the top lane where we have the keep already dropping in HP. The keep is going to drop even more in, ex in uh, uh, HP, so they need to do something about that. And here we have my insanity moving in. They're trying to flank them. Nice howling blast. Really good howling blast. And immediately the stun. Look at that stun from the Uther. Gets that in. Konos, they try to drop him, but the ancestral healing hits. And suddenly my insanity is on the back foot. They are on the back foot and oh boy, like that shock and awe. Freds doesn't stand a chance there. They're dropping the first one. Suddenly Shinobu is in trouble as well, but Kono is being dropped first. It's a one for one, at least right to the beginning. And Illidan jumps over the wall, takes down the stitches. He still has resurgence. He's going to come back in a second. So does the Chen, of course, but the top keep is taken out. Those mercenaries doing a great job with that. And now we still have 43 seconds on the Anubarak, but level 23 versus level 22 with now two lanes pushing in. 
Two lanes pushing in since both keeps have been taken out. The keep to the top, the keep to the bottom. Only the one in the middle is still there. And uh-oh, it is the Curse Tribute. It is the third. Is MYI really trying to fight here? There's no way they can do that. They are trying to push them back and maybe core it. All right, so they're going to be cursed. They are going to be cursed for sure. But they're trying to move down to the bottom and maybe fake a bit of a backdoor attempt just to force them to TP, which they're not doing. So the curse is, is already there. It's in place. And we have the golem, the boss at the top, taken on. The boss is taken on down here. 20 seconds on this one. It looks like my insanity is thinking about trying to contest, but they're too late already. They're too late to contest that, and there's the boss gone already. Boss is gonna push the top map, and it, guys, if like if you're cursed and you have those bosses moving in, that is doing damage. That is that is definitely a problem. 16 versus 16. That's the kill count right now. The levels 23 versus well about to be 23. Boss is pushing the top down here. Another boss is gonna be taken pretty soon. I to heart is looking at it, but they see all of the players of my insanity at the top lane uh, dealing with the boss there, so they can easily claim this one now. The curse itself shouldn't really do too much damage in regards to the keeps, though. I do not think that they will be like the map control is now in the hands of I to heart, so they achieved that with the curse. But they are not going to drop one of the. Well, they actually might be able to drop this keep since it's so low already, and yes, they will. The golem scaled so hard that it kills one key, but that's the only one that they will lose. The golem scale... Oh, or are they? The golem scale, of course, over time. So they are getting stronger as the game progresses. And we're 26 minutes in. And this one, the golem that pushes in right now, it looks like Eye to Heart is trying to uh, maybe even end with this. They are trying to move in with that, and they might be able to get that. That's gonna. This is an extremely difficult fight for uh, my insanity. They are passing the golem. They're moving in. Here comes the shock and all. The immediate move against the Odin. It's getting healed in the last seconds. What a great ancestral healing, but it gets dropped regardless. And now Shinobu might be in trouble here. He's getting locked down. Shinobu is about to die, but so is the Rega and the false stat. Shinobu is still alive. And they're going straight for green. He's blinking away and he will get away too, but not the chat. Or is he? Wow, kills the Rainer there. Good job by him, but is he going to escape? Well, I do not think so. There's only one of those tri triplets is still there. And if Lowell gets another dash and then... No, they're going on the horse. They're going on the horse and Cone... No, he's down. Conus is down, but he has resurgence. He still has resurgence down here. That golem is still doing damage to the core. 63% on it. <laughs> that game. What a game now. 20 kills against 17. My insanity is starting to, to get the better team fights. They were struggling a lot in the early game, but now especially... Oh my god, that Illidan. He didn't even know there was a hook coming, but dashed away to kill the last one and was able to dodge the hook in the process. Two heroes still down against one still down. 63% versus 86. Going from one camp to another. Going for the hard camp. And one keep for each team. The keep in the middle is the only one that both of them still have. And this could not get any closer. Looking again at the talent. So they have a bit of an idea what's going on in those fights. The heroic abilities will all be up for the next battle again. We have double resurgence on both teams. Blink on the Tychus, which allowed him to survive the last battle, as you could see. Blink on Shinobu and Blink on Illidan. Both of them used the entire time. Looking at the stats, hero damage. Shinobu and Noisen all the way up at the top. Siege damage. That's where Noisen shines as well. That slam build makes it possible. And let's look down here to the bottom lane again. <laughs> Apparently an attempt to core it. Oh, they want to lure them towards the tribute and then just core it. <gasps> uh oh. Uh oh. But they need they, they they know that something's happening. They know, they know, they know, they are waiting for it. They're like, boys, there's nobody there. There's nobody anywhere. Get ready to be back. They are expecting that. They only have one hero here, and do they see it now? Oh, they need to move back. Oh god, that's gonna be such a clutch defense. The curse is on, but there they go. They're moving for the core, they're just right clicking it. And here comes the massive stun by Ace of Spades. They're dropping Grim Skull, the false that is down. Look at the core rushing down. The first zero down, 30%, 30%, but another kill, 3 already at 16%, 16, 12, it's 11, it's down to 9, it's only the Gen 6, 5, and Gen is getting to... <laughs> oh my god, it's 2%, oh 
god, it's 2% on the court, two heroes with resurgence, and in come the pushes with the mercenaries and the catapults. 40 seconds still on that. Oh my god, like they're starting to move in, but here comes the attempt by Noisen to finish the core of 2% and the shield. That's all that they have, but two of them already realizing what's going on. They're moving back, they're trying to intercept it, and there it is. The core killed Ace of Spades, able to get it before the backdoor happens, and it is GG. The blue team wins. My Insanity takes a 2-0 against Eye to Heart at the Rocket vs. Sphere Invitational.